Very good evening, everybody. I remember one T-bone, once T-bone says, like a fool with a plan can outsmart a genius without a plan. So here, in order to pursue the FMG, we are producing you the FMG hack series where we will be discussing about the strategy to approach each subject prior to your FMG examination so that you, you work in a smarter way than the harder way and you make your score good and you make your score jump from somewhere between 130 to 160. So these are the strategies which we're going to discuss about uh, uh, you know, for each and every subject we're going to discuss about that and then we proceed with how to approach each subject. So in this section, the first subject we are going to talk about is your anatomy. So speaking about the anatomy, the high yield areas of your anatomy are your number one is your abdomen and pelvis, while the rest of them, number two, the second most high yield area is your embryology. And speaking about the embryology, you have almost like 17 percentage of the question which comes from the embryology. And you have the head and neck, which is 16.1%, and thorax, which is 12.4%, and upper limb is the least one where you see 10.44%. Uh, Okay, speaking about this, so in general, the abdomen and pelvis occupy most of the questions. In general, abdomen and pelvis occupy most of the question and the second most area where your embryology. So we discuss on each and every topics, what are the things you have to study and what are the things uh, you, which are high yield for your examination. And then we proceed for, uh, and then we do this for each and every subject in this whole series. Okay, so speaking about the areas of your upper limb, you're having upper limb anatomy, lower limb anatomy, head and neck anatomy, thorax anatomy, abdomen and pelvis anatomy, neuroanatomy, histology, and embryology. These are the areas where you're going to study in anatomy. Among the, the very high yield areas where number one is your abdomen and pelvis, and number two is your embryology, and number three is your uh, thorax, and number four is your neuroanatomy. And then you have the uh, you have the sequence of uh, other areas which have the equal contribution for your FMG examination. So speaking about the the upper limb anatomy. So speaking about the upper limb anatomy, you know the bones of upper limb, especially your humerus, radius, and ulna, and your bones of your hands are pretty important. Like which ear, the bones of the hands, uh, the ear of ossification, and then the shape, and which one is the first to ossify, which one is the last to ossify. All the things should be kept in mind, people. And then apart from that, you may have to know that or what are the shapes of each carpal bones. And then you have to, speaking about the bones of uh, upper limb, uh, you may have to remember the, uh, you know, like all the fractures. For example, like uh, you have this Montagia fracture, Galizzi fracture, Smith fracture, Coley's fracture, and then uh, you have a various named fracture. And in the, you have to, you also need to know like, for example, shaft of the humeral fracture could result in radial nerve injury, supracondylar median nerve injury, and uh, surgical neck axillary nerve injury. So you have to remember each and every portion in the case of your bones, but uh, only the humerus, radius, ulna, and the carpal bones are pretty high yield when compared to the clavicle and scapula. And then you have the muscles of upper limb. So speaking about the muscles of upper limb, the rotator cuff muscles, the biceps muscles, the triceps muscles, and uh, Mm, the biceps, the triceps and muscles of hand, you know, the small muscles like a thenar and hypothenar eminence are now the choice of questions in terms of a spotters. Mm. Apart from that, you may have the nose of upper limb and speaking about the nose of upper limb, the brachial plexus and its major branches are pretty important one, quite kind of like a star rated topic in terms of your upper limb. So the question and the topic of area when it comes to the upper limb is most probably with the brachial plexus. And then you have the blood vessels, especially the axillary artery, brachial artery and radial artery or the arteries of choice. They may ask you um, in the case of your uh, in the case of your upper limb. So speaking about the arteries of choice, all the all the axillary, brachial and the radial arteries you have to remember. For example, branches of your axillary artery and uh, branches of your, uh, you know, like a brachial artery. And then what are the, uh, what are the radial elbow anastomosis, shoulder anastomosis, all those things. Uh, pretty, you know, like uh, next to the brachial plexus, you have to remember these things. And then you have a joints of upper limb, especially the types of joint, which one is a saddle joint, which one is a ball and socket joint. And uh, apart from that, what are the ligament that stabilizes each joint are pretty important in terms of upper limb. Okay. 
So uh, this is the upper limb anatomy and considered to the lower limb anatomy again it goes for the foot area. So tibia, fibula and the bones of the foot are pretty high yield and speaking about the muscles uh, you have the posterior compartment of your thigh and the posterior compartment of your leg where and muscles of your foot are pretty high yield. Nowadays the muscles of the foot their layers has been asked as a topic of interest. Topic of interest nowadays is going to be your, you know, the muscles of foot, all the four layers and what layers, what muscle is getting inserted and originated, what the short muscle and where these are getting originated, all of them has been asked about that. And then you have the lower limb nerves, which is the lumbosacral plexus, where you have to read especially the sciatic nerve and its major branches. And because sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body, and apart from that, you have uh, blood vessels of your lower limb, especially the femoral artery, popliteal artery, and dorsal spinous artery. And especially, you have to know about the knee, uh, knee joint anastomosis and the hip joint anastomosis, trochanteric anastomosis, all those things you have to remember. And then you are speaking about the joints of a uh, lower limb, hip joint, a knee joint, and ankle joint are all pretty important. What are the ligaments which can, uh, you know, like uh, support them? And uh, we have this uh, coxa vera, coxa valgum, genu varum, genu valgum, all of these conditions which may be uh, considered to be the high yield in terms of your lower limb anatomy. Then you may have this uh, uh, head and neck anatomy. Speaking about the head and neck anatomy, the bones of skull are pretty, pretty important. They may ask you the base of the skull and they may point you out some foramen. They may ask you the base of the skull and then they may ask you the uh, you know like uh, foramen and they may use it as a spotter or they may ask you like what are the contents that passes through this foramen or identified foramen this type of questions has been asked nowadays because you know in applied anatomy you may expect to see this type of questions and then you have the muscles of face and neck speaking about the muscles of face and neck you have the muscles of facial expression mastication and swallowing and uh, you have the nerves Speaking about the nerves, all the cranial nerves are pretty important from uh, all the, each cranial nerve courses, where it getting turned and what are the muscles it may supply, what which one is a parasympathetic and uh, uh, among that which one supplies your GIT and what are the other innovations, all those things are pretty important. You have to remember in terms of the nerves of your head and neck and then blood vessels of head and neck, yes, carotid artery branches are, are always be a choice of questions when it comes to the head and neck anatomy and uh, you should not leave that people and then you have the organs of head and neck especially your eyes ear nose and uh, throat this may not be asked as a typical anatomy question but may be asked as a ophthalmo or ent question ophthalmo or ent question you may expect to see the anatomy of ent and the anatomy of your eye okay so this is pretty high yield in terms of your head and neck anatomy then moving on to the thorax moving on to the thorax you have the bones of thorax especially the rib cage and the sternum and thoracic vertebrae so thoracic inlet and outlet you may have to remember and apart from that muscles of thorax like especially the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm especially the diaphragm opening what are the openings what are the vertebral levels that the diaphragm is getting open and each and everything are pretty important people that you should not miss and then you have the you know, blood vessels of thorax especially the iota pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins iota pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins and then you have this organs of thorax especially the heart lungs and the major vessels so the content of your hilum of your lungs are pretty important content of hilum of your lung and blood supply of your heart blood supply the all the coronary arteries blood supply of your heart are important and you have the major blood vessels apart from that everything everything is important people so in terms of your organs of your thorax heart lungs and your major blood vessels like branches of your descending iota and branches of your arch of iota and then all the things uh, your heart blood supply and your lungs blood supply and then heart contents of the hilum of lung and then lung anatomy and heart anatomy they may ask you especially when it comes for the heart uh, blood vessels they may ask you the what artery is in what artery determines the cardiac dominance this was the very important question that you may uh, expect to see the major artery which is uh, determining your cardiac dominance is your posterior interventricular artery so you have to remember that too and then you have this uh, next area is your abdomen and pelvis anatomy. So speaking about this abdomen and pelvis anatomy, you have the muscles 
muscles of your abdomen which is considered to be the rectus abdominis external and internal oblique ways and transverse abdominis and then you have the nose of abdomen especially the vagus nerve and sympathetic trunk and then you have the blood vessels of your abdomen especially your abdominal iota and its major branches and the organs of abdomen especially the liver spleen pancreas and intestine pretty high yield high yield area people anatomy of liver uh, and this may ask us a surgical anatomy too so uh, you may expect to see the surgical anatomy of liver too surgical anatomy of liver too like uh, what are the lobes will be removed on a right hepatectomy left a left hepatectomy what are the lobes you may remove extended right extended left all those things may be asked in the uh, in the surgery question but it may come as an anatomical point of view okay and then you have the pelvic anatomy so bones of pelvis ilium ischium and pubis all the things in which is related to the hip bone will be asked and muscles you have the pelvic floor muscles and muscles of your hip joint and then you are speaking about those nerves of pelvis you have the internal uh, you have the pudental nerve and the sacral plexus all of the nerves from the sacral plexus are pretty important and especially the lumbosacral plexus or you have to know and then you have the internal iliac artery and its major branches like all the visceral branches vesicular artery pudental artery and all those things which are all the major branches of your internal iliac artery like a superior gluteal artery inferior gluteal artery obturator artery vesicular artery and then all the uh, you know related uh, related blood vessels are pretty important and then you have the organs of pelvis especially the bladder reproductive organs and rectum all of them you have to remember people each and every point without a question you have to remember and speaking about the next area which is your neuroanatomy so which is the anatomy of your brain and spinal cord especially the uh, different region of your brain and the spinal tra uh, spinal tra spinal cord tracts like a dorsal column spinothalamic tract and then rubrospinal tract vestibular spinal tract all the sensory and motor tracts simply speaking you have to remember and then you have to remember the thalamus where lateral geniculate body carries what function medial geniculate body carries what function and uh, a ventroposterior lateral nucleus all the nucleus of the thalamus hypothalamus subthalamus epithalamus and then cortex speaking about the cortex each and every area each and every lobe contains what are the cortex and what are the functions of each cortex and the higher order functions all those things you have to remember and speaking about the uh, and speaking about the neuroanatomy along with the neuroanatomy you have to co combine it with the neuro uh, nervous system physiology like action potential how nerve to nerve is transmission is happening and how nerve to muscle transmission is happening and all those pathways you have to remember in terms of your neuroanatomy then you have the histology all the four tissues their respective histological pattern like epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue all of them are important and their functions then you speaking about the embryology all the uh, all the organ systems development for example like you have the neuro uh, neuro development like you have this dorsal mid, midline ectoderm will form the neural tube neural crest and then you have this uh, sorry neural crest neural tube and then you have the neural pore and then you have the brain primitive structure like a prosencephalon mesencephalon diencephalon uh, sorry prosencephalon mesencephalon and metencephalon and all the pro three primitive to five secondary structure and five secondary structure to the entire uh, development of your CNS on the upper area and in the lower area you have the alar plate and bezel plate which will be combining the which will be continuing as a dorsal and a ventral horn of your uh, spinal cord all those important uh, topics you have to remember people so speaking about the anatomy in nutshell the high yield area is abdomen and pelvis where you have to remember the anatomy of your viscera and then base of the skull and then thorax uh, the organs of your blood supply of your heart and cardiac dominance and the diaphragm and the, the remaining bones and muscles which may be asked as a spotter so in turn we conclude the anatomy so uh, thank you for watching the video and we'll be producing next session with the physiology